In this video, we're going to go through the schema that we'll use to think our way through chest pain. In the second video, we're going to go through the schema again, but this time we're going to list one or two classic symptoms that are associated with each of the diagnoses that can cause chest pain. In the third video, we're going to go over the concept of referred pain. And in the fourth video around chest pain, we're going to focus on myocardial infarction. When someone comes to see me with chest pain, they could end up in the emergency department or having an emergency procedure. Or they could end up going home simply with my reassurance. How can you tell the difference? Well, what you need is an approach an ordered and efficient way of thinking your way through the problem of chest pain so that you don't miss anything serious and so that you can come up with a short, reasonable list of possible diagnoses. So let's start with the schema that we're going to use to structure our thinking around chest pain. Now remember, a schema is not an algorithm and it's not a flow chart um, because it's not designed to get you flowing through Till you find the right answer. It's more like a way of structuring your thinking so that you can not miss anything serious and you end up with a reasonable differential diagnosis. Now you're going to need to memorize this schema before class. Uh, in fact, I hope you remember it forever and I hope that you build on this structure, the way to think about chest pain, through the years of your training. I still use this structure to think about chest pain now. Luckily, there's an easy way to remember this schema using anatomy from inside to outside. And this is good because our brains are much better at remembering locations and visualizing locations than they are at remembering text. The first and the deepest level we're going to talk about has to do with the heart. It's deepest inside and I want you to visualize the heart and its coronary arteries feeding it oxygenated blood. If those coronary arteries get plugged, then your heart muscle can die. We call that myocardial infarction. Now you'll hear a bunch of other expressions associated with that, maybe coronary artery disease or atherosclerosis or acute coronary syndrome or the symptom called angina or angina. To make it simple, we're just going to talk about myocardial infarction when one of those vessels actually gets plugged leading to death of cardiac muscle. That'll make it easier for us to think about. So that's level one, myocardial infarction. That's the first of three killers we're going to talk about when it comes to chest pain. For the second step moving outwards, you should visualize the heart being wrapped by something called the pericardium. The pericardium can get inflamed and irritated. We call that pericarditis. And that's gonna be our second cause of chest pain, pericarditis. See how the Latin helps you here? Peri is beside or associated with cardium or cardiac is associated with the heart and, and the itis is, means inflammation. You'll hear itis a lot. So pericarditis, inflammation of the wrapping of the heart. Next comes the aorta. That's the blood vessel that leaves the heart. I want you to visualize the inside lining of that aorta getting split open. So the lining of the artery is split open and blood is forced between the inner layers of the lining, dissecting that lining apart. That's what we call aortic dissection and it's the second in our list of three killers that are causes of chest pain. Aortic dissection. So that's it for the heart and the aorta that's close to the heart. Next we move to the tube that runs behind the heart that carries your food. That's the esophagus. There are two things that can happen to the esophagus that will cause chest pain. One of them has a really long name called gastroesophageal reflux disease. We often shorten that to GERD. And really what it is is acid from the stomach backwashing up into the esophagus. That often gives a symptom that people refer to as heartburn. So that's GERD. The second diagnosis associated with the esophagus is a spasm of the muscle in the wall of the esophagus. It's kind of like a cramp in that muscle, and that's called esophageal spasm. 
Okay, now we're halfway through. Uh, remember, we've gone through the coronary arteries getting plugged, causing myocardial infarction. We've talked about the wrapping of the heart, the pericardium getting inflamed, causing pericarditis. We've talked about the aorta getting its inner lining ripped open and then dissected for aortic dissection. And then we've talked about the esophagus that runs behind the heart, either going into spasm or getting backwash of acid, causing GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease. Next on the way out are the lungs. Now you've heard of pneumonia, that's when the lungs get infected, and sometimes infection in the lungs can cause chest pain. One thing you may not have heard of though is pulmonary embolus. Imagine a blood clot traveling from somewhere in your leg, making its way up into your heart, and then getting pumped from your heart into your pulmonary arteries. Now if the clot is small, you may never notice. If the clot is large, it may kill you instantly. So pulmonary embolus is the third in our list of three killers. Number one was myocardial infarction, number two was aortic dissection, and pulmonary embolus is number three. It's a tricky one, and it can sometimes cause chest pain. Next on our way out are the bones and the muscles and the joints that form our rib cage. Now, any of those could get irritated or inflamed or injured and cause chest pain. So we'll call that category musculoskeletal chest pain, sometimes called MSK. Last on our way out is something that's triggered in the brain. It's called panic attack, and it's a common anxiety disorder that's often associated with chest pain. In fact, classically, the victims of panic attack feel like they're having a heart attack or have a feeling at least of impending death or of impending doom. All right, we're done. So let's review. Let's start deep down with the heart and the coronary arteries that get plugged, myocardial infarction. The wrapping of the heart, the pericardium getting inflamed, pericarditis. The aorta, its lining getting split open and then dissected, aortic dissection. Next, the esophagus, either going into spasm or getting backwash from the stomach, gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD. Then we have the lungs. They can either get infected, pneumonia, or they can get that unusual clot moving up from the leg into the heart and then getting pumped out Russian roulette style, either causing no symptoms at all or maybe some chest pain or sudden death. Then you have the surface layer, the chest cavity and its muscles and bones and joints that can all get sore. MSK or musculoskeletal pain. And last but not least, the one triggered in your brain, the common anxiety disorder called panic attack, which is often associated with chest pain.